Special thanks goes out to my good friend Sin Wicked for his donation of today's review. And by donation, I of course mean prying it from his cold dead hands as he lies choking on his own vomit on the floor. You should get that looked at, by the way. Anyway, thanks, buddy. Every once in a while, I find that uh, after watching various different anime, I feel that I need a sort of emotional pick-me-up. Something that is very emotionally moving, that differs from what I generally end up watching. Now, lots of shows of various different genres like to have emotional bits sprinkled in here and there. That's kind of par for the course. And it does make for a very good show, as those are usually the moments that you remember the most out of all moments from any given show. But occasionally, you'll run across a show whose sole purpose is to create a plot that has this nice gradual buildup until a satisfying emotional conclusion. And this is usually signified by a depressing god of sadness who appears before you to make sure you are properly traumatized. There will be no survivor! Yeah, kinda like that. Now most of these shows are heavily steeped in romance. See Tor, Dora, EF The Tale Memories, and of course, well, Clan Ad. But romance is not necessarily the be-all and end-all for these moments. Ladies, gentlemen, and others, my name is Arcada, and welcome to Glass Reflection today from A1 Pictures. On Ohana, the flower we saw that day. Let's jam. The story of Anohana revolves around a young man named Jinta and his small group of friends. Unfortunately, by friends, I mean former friends. Several years prior, as children, they all used to be friendly, but after the unfortunate death of one of their best friends, a young girl named Menma, they all grew apart and went their separate ways. This is, of course, until Menma decides to return as an older version of herself to haunt Jinta. I use the word haunt in the most pleasant way possible, of course. This is because of Menma's cheerful demeanor, but the fact remains that for all intents and purposes, Menma has come back as some sort of spirit ghost type thing and only Jinta can see her. Now, this does not stop her from physically interacting with anyone or anything else, but the show spends a lot of time on the fact that Jinta is the only one allowed to communicate with Menma herself. This helps to put a further strain on the relationship with his former friends as they go about trying to figure out a way for Menma to be peacefully sent to heaven, as his friends quite possibly consider him insane for claiming to be able to talk to their dead friend and rightly so. And that's the story of Anohana in a nutshell, really attempting to figure out how to let Menma pass on while also digging into the lives of all the characters to see how Menma's death has affected all of them in various different ways. What I really like about Anohana though, is that it's an original story. Now I don't mean that what happens in the plot is necessarily original, I'm more so referring to the fact that it is not based off anything. Not a light novel, not a visual novel, and not a manga. As such, there is no original material to reference from or to compare to. You know nothing about the story, the characters, or how the plot progresses, which really is how it should be. I am also a fan of the amount of realism that the show has, ignoring the whole ghost element, and I find that the majority of said realism exists within the characters. What's great about these characters is that they seem rather unrelatable at first, but as time passes and you get to know them a bit more and you get to see the motivations behind their actions, they become much more enjoyable to watch. It's not just their personalities either, which vary between the stereotypical quote, popular Sundere girl, unquote, the nerdy glasses girl, the lovable teddy bear, the shut-in, and this guy. But their designs are also something noteworthy as well. They are not overly pandering as most shows like to do. No character is overly sexualized or overly moe. 
they seem more like real people than anime characters, which is a testament to not only how well they are designed, but also how well they are portrayed. All of the characters involved have some semblance of emotional baggage from the death of their childhood friend, and they all have various different ways of coping. As society at large tells you that you should only grieve for a short period of time after the death, but then move on. So then, the idea of having a ghost come back and rip up a bunch of emotional scars leads to some quality storytelling, especially when most of the characters hold doubts that the ghost of Menma has even returned in the first place. It's the slow unraveling of all the character backgrounds and personalities that is the meat of this show, and it's one of the reasons why it's so enjoyable. If I had to critique it, and I do, I would say that the thing that nagged me the most about the character arcs are their inconsistent lengths. Now, I realize the show only has 11 episodes to it, and for some reason they didn't go the usual 12 or 13, but whatever. But I do feel that some of the characters had way more time for their arc than was necessary, while others could have done with Heck, even just five more minutes by the end of it. And some of our characters get barely any screen time at all beyond their interaction and the other plots, as well as the occasional one-off sentence, which is slightly depressing. To be fair though, what we did get was enough to build up that emotional climax near the end that the show really needed to get right. And as per usual, with the ending being paramount and all, the climax turned out brilliantly. Pedro's tears are once again flowing like waterfalls. Anohana was produced by the wonderfully atmospheric production studio known as A1 Pictures, famous for a little show called Sword Art Online, though they did this one first. Granted, I think I remember them more fondly for a show called Sound of the Sky. Like both of those shows, Anohana has moments of brilliance that really just set it apart from other shows in terms of animation and just its style in general. Like Sound of the Sky, it's the animation of the characters that really shines as the show goes on, while not falling into that moe fanservice trap that plagues a lot of other anime of late. It's also worth noting how Anohana deals with flashback scenes. Despite being the source of most of the emotional turmoil that haunts our characters, the flashback sequences are animated in a way that gives them an innocent and fluffy feeling to them, in contrast to the much sharper and slightly darker scenes of present day. This seems to be more in line with how the characters themselves view the past, preferring to remember the good parts of their friendship while conveniently forgetting bits that they would rather not remember. And the way that the animation itself portrays this speaks volumes. What's nice about the music for Anohana is really just how peaceful it is. Sure, other emotional soundtracks all have moments of peacefulness in them. Yes, I get that. But this one is just full of it. It uses the piano to great effect, with the occasional tracks adding in the acoustic guitar and a string ensemble. It's also not all about the slow emotional pieces either, having several tracks played alongside the scenes of childish youth with that sort of upbeat, playful feeling to them. It's quite soothing, actually. The show also unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, contains no dub. As I sit here though, I almost feel like the show was better off for it. Now normally I like to sit in the pro-dub camp because I know that there is a good chunk of the anime community that only watches dubs because for whatever reason they can't watch subs and that's a whole different video for another time. But in this case, having no dub immediately presented to me, I almost feel like at this stage, a dub would not be able to do the show justice. And this is mainly because I look back at other emotionally charged series that I like that have dubs, like anything from the Key Kyoto Annie tag team specifically, and I feel like, yeah, no dub is probably best. Not that those shows have bad dubs per se, but they just don't seem to have the same kind of emotional impact that the Japanese dub has. Although this could just be me and my I will side with whatever dub I happen to listen to first, bias. I guess one of the biggest reasons that I like Anohana so much is because now I get to add it to the currently very small pile of shows that can fill the clan ad void. Because finding these shows, watching them, and enjoying them is just an immense pleasure for me. 
Now it's not perfect, obviously because nothing ever is, but it makes a good go for it and I rather liked its initiative. The other thing I like is its case, because look at this thing, it's a monster. Certainly much larger than the standard DVD case, but that's so it can include this wonderful commemorative art book. Now normally I would criticize this sort of thing on the grounds that the only reason that they would make the box this big and so on and so forth with all the wonderful extras is so that they could charge more for it and had this been done by another company that probably would have been the case. I'm looking at you Aniplex. But here that is decidedly not the case. In fact, back when the show was on sale you could go to Right Stuff and pick up this wonderful box set for about the same price that you would pay for a half series set from Funimation, which is rather good. Now you may notice that I did say was on sale and that part is unfortunately true because at the time of this video, Anohana is out of print. NIS America still holds the license for the show, but for whatever reason, they've let it gone out of print and you'll be hard pressed to actually find a copy anywhere. With any luck though, they will get around to making another print of it because it is sorely needed. So with all that in mind, I've meticulously calculated values for the categories of story, characters, animation, sound, and my own personal enjoyment, which after having it fall to its death in a river and then waiting, I don't know, five to 10 years for it to start haunting me, leaves me awarding Anohana with an overall score of, well, look at that a solid eight out of 10, and an overall recommendation to buy it whenever it becomes available again. Not sure when that's gonna be, but when it does, yeah, get it. At the time of this video, as previously mentioned, Anohana has been licensed by NIS America, but thankfully, even though they have let the DVDs and Blu-rays go out of print, if you live in the US or Canada, you can check out the show over on Crunchyroll in its entirety for free. And make sure you enjoy it, because it's, it, it's really good. While you're there, if you happen to enjoy yourself, you can go to this link, glassreflection.net slash Crunchyroll for a free trial of Crunchyroll's premium services and all the wonderful anime awesomeness that it contains. Though full disclosure, the premium subscription is not necessary to watch Anohana. For alternate anime recommendations, I point you towards another character-based anime from the same year, Usagi Drop or Bunny Drop, depending on if you want to use the translated title or not, as well as the previously mentioned Sound of the Sky as a nice slice of life to round out our little trio here today. Between all of these, you should hopefully find something to your liking. And that's it from me. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video, follow me on Twitter if you feel so inclined, and until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, stay frosty.